Welcome back to the City Current Radio Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, empowering the good. We're honored to be joined by Lori Shinton. She is the president and CEO of Hands On Nashville, and she's the chair of Nashville VOAD. And we'll talk about what that means here in just a second. But Lori, how are you doing? I'm doing great this morning. How about you, Jeremy? Doing well. So before we talk about Nashville VOAD, let's start with a little bit of context overall about Hands on Nashville. Hopefully everyone knows Hands on Nashville. They've heard of your efforts and everything you do, but give us a little bit of background on that side and then we'll tie it all together. Yeah, absolutely. So Hands on Nashville is um, a volunteer resource center. And what we're best known for probably is um, we partner with about 200 nonprofits um, in Nashville and some surrounding counties. and They post their volunteer opportunities on our website and people can go to Han.org and they can search all kinds of ways. I've got a couple of free hours on Saturday. Let me see what I can get into. Or if they have a specific service area that they'd like to volunteer in, like education, they can look for that. And they click, you know, set a profile, find their opportunity, sign up, and then go attend the volunteer opportunity. Um, We also, though... (laughs) are probably, especially in 2020 and 2021, known for our disaster response. Um, We are um, part of the city's emergency management plan. And so when a disaster happens in Nashville, we manage all of the um, volunteer activities related to um, disaster response and recovery. And sadly, there have been a number of different disasters that have struck Middle Tennessee. And so you've been on the front lines. And so let's go ahead and carry that over. Nashville VOAD. VOAD is the acronym Voluntary Organizations Active in Disaster. And so give us some background on how that has kind of come together. And then we'll dive into all that you do with that. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, the tornado happened, I think, March 3rd, 2020. And we did not, Nashville did not have an active uh, VOAD chapter. And so what that meant was very quickly realized that, you know, new organizations pop up in areas and they're serving folks and not all organizations know each other. And there's an old saying that says, um, responding to a disaster is not the time to be passing business cards. So it's not the time to get to know each other because everybody is already, you know, just in over their heads trying to respond to the event. And so um, a few of the organizations in town, we got together and said, okay, we have to establish um, the VOAD so that we can do that, get to know you um, ahead of a disaster. Although as Nashvillians know, we really haven't had a break um, in the last year, so. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been kind of an unfortunate chain of different events and circumstances, um, and, and we'll kind of cover that a little bit too, but when you talk about VOAD, and you know, obviously, as you mentioned, it's you know being proactive, getting to know each other before a disaster happens, but it's also sharing best practices, training, equipment, like it's all of these different things, and so it's being proactive, but it's also you know on the recovery side being ready too, so talk about the goals and the mission of VOAD. Yeah, so the the goal is really to um, collaborate, coordinate, and really be ready to respond. And so we actually can get into mitigation. You know, how do we help the city be mitigate some disasters? Then how are we prepared to respond? That also ties in with um, work with the city, with the Office of Emergency Management, and then um, the the actual response, and then the um, recovery. So I would say the response phase is, you know, anywhere depending on the size of the disaster from a week to several weeks. And then ultimately you move into recovery. And this is where really the partners that participate in VOAD, they're in it with the community until the long run. And what I mean by that, our goal is once a disaster's happened, if I'm a survivor of a tornado and it blew my house away and all of that stuff, VOAD is sticking with me until my house is repaired or rebuilt. And so that that takes a lot of time because they're not just one entity that takes care of all the needs of 
individuals in a disaster, which kind of goes back to why we have to have a VOAD so that we know each other, know who does what, who to call for which things, how to deploy those resources, et cetera, et cetera. Give us an idea of scope. How many organizations are a part of VOAD? We have about 51 organizations right now that are a part of VOAD. Um, and so it's mainly nonprofits, um, churches, and community organizations. Um, we are exploring opening, um, you know, partnering with corporate partners who can bring some skills and expertise, um, you know, um, except, and corporations also, as you know, respond to disasters. Um, and we also work very closely, as I mentioned before, with the city. And when you look at Hands on Nashville and your role specifically, obviously the volunteer power is a big piece of that, but then the overarching coordination, especially on your end being the chair, give us an idea when you talk about Hands on Nashville, kind of your plug into the system. Yeah, so my role at Hands on Nashville is, is really what led to me raising my hand and say, hey, I will volunteer to chair the VOAD. Um, I'll go back to the tornado. That was the first um, disaster. I have been at Hands on Nashville for six years, and that was the first really significant disaster that we had to respond to. And what I realized for our organization, for us to do what we, our mission is, which is to help volunteers connect into the community, then we have to know who all the players are. And so that goes beyond obviously disaster work. That's all kinds of um, charitable work that happens across the city. So it made sense then for me to also say, I will chair VOAD because it's really the same kind of thing as what we do at Hands On Nashville. We try to get to know other nonprofits, what their missions are, how volunteers can help, um, et cetera. And so it's, it's just a natural kind of shift into disaster specific type work. You mentioned the tornado March 3rd, 2020, and then you sadly, the Christmas day bombing 2020, flood and severe storms, March 2021. So there have been quite a few disasters and unfortunate circumstances that you've had to really react to. Um, give us an idea of maybe some of the things that you learned coming out of the tornado that you were able to implement so that you could see some progress being made with VOAD in terms of, okay, we're coming together, we're, we're reacting smarter, we're leveraging this a little bit better. What have you seen in terms of those different circumstances in terms of getting the response a little bit better each time? Yeah, that, that actually, that's a great question. Um, because I mentioned before, nonprofits stay engaged with survivors all the way through recovery. So there was, there's a group of folks that were on the long-term recovery group for the tornado. So on Christmas day, when the bombing occurred, um, I immediately got notified um, by OEM and I was able to pull together, already knew who the players needed to be, pull them together and say, okay, we got to hop on a call and figure out what our plan is and what we're going to do. The bombing, because it was man-made and because it was a crime, was a little bit different scenario. Um, and so, but we were able to adjust really quickly because some players that I didn't know, you know, six months ago or eight months ago before the bombing, I knew them now. And so that's one way. Then the flood, that we even got a little more sophisticated in that we immediately, we had stood up a VOAD website. Um, it's NashvilleResponse.com. And we put an application up there. If you have been impacted by the flood, you know, fill this out, what are your needs? so that we could begin to figure out more immediately who is impacted, what are their needs, and then how do we get in touch with them, make immediate referrals for things like um, food replacement and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, and also to help clean out their homes, which, you know, volunteers play a big part in that, um, and things like that. And we stood up our processes way quicker than we did in the tornado. So we almost like we were ready to go when it happened. It wasn't, now it wasn't perfect. I'm not, not all that to say that, but definitely we now have, you know, three um, call to action events that we've done, which is feeding into how is it that we want to 
really do this, if we could do it perfectly, what would it look like? And so we're building those processes now. What would you encourage for other communities based on what you're obviously learning firsthand? What would you encourage for other communities to be more proactive and come together and, and able to uh, respond correctly to disasters? So I would um, coordinate with their um, Office of Emergency Management. Um, and then I would, you know, there's obvious disaster players like the Red Cross, like Salvation Army that do it nationwide. I would get in touch with them, get their interest about setting up a VOAD, and then begin to reach out to nonprofits in the area who say, oh, yes, this is something that I would respond to. Um, this is something that I would help with. Um, you know, setting up a VOAD, it is, it takes time, but it's not, um, because we're not a corporation, we're just in a collaborative, we're a space to be able to collaborate. It's not that difficult once you get people to say, yeah, I want to participate in that and engage. And the Office of Emergency Management, they can provide technical training and um, desktop exercises and things like that. So that even if you don't have a disaster happen immediately, you know, you can prepare um, for what that would look like and who you would call and how that would occur. How can the community plug in? How can the community help? So um, the community can help in lots of ways. Um, Hands on Nashville has started a disaster volunteer leader program. And so if someone's interested, and becoming a disaster volunteer leader. Again, you can go to han.org. We're training individuals and having them, um, you know, do volunteer leader outside of disaster to kind of practice. So when a disaster actually comes, they'll already know ABC. It's just a little more hectic during that time. Um, but also the community can support, you know, there's a VOAD leadership fund at the Community Foundation of Middle Tennessee. And um, if people want to donate um, to ensure that we have the resources to do these exercises and to do these trainings and to be prepared, um, they can donate to that fund. And that fund then will get dispersed to organizations that are leading and preparing um, to respond. So those are a couple of ways. And then also, Anytime that something happens, there's going to be ample opportunity for people to come out and volunteer and engage and help. How has Nashville VOAD impacted or kind of made you look at things in a different light for Hands on Nashville? So um, it's reinforced, it's reinforced this idea of collaboration and coordination. You know, there's a lot, people always talk about that. Hands on Nashville is a unique entity in that we're the only one that does volunteer management in Nashville. Um, but that also gives us the opportunity really to collaborate and coordinate with every nonprofit that uses volunteers. And so, um, you know, learning to bring people together and figure out how to work together towards a goal, that is something that I could use every day at Hands on Nashville as well. What's something that you wish everyone knew about Hands on Nashville? Um, I, 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 well, I guess what I would wish everyone knew about Hands on Nashville is that it is so easy to sign up. Um, we don't require a lot of information um, and that you can fi literally find any kind of opportunity you want to engage um, in service through our website. I wish all the citizens in Nashville knew that. Nice. We'll wrap up. You've mentioned it throughout a few times, but talk about the website, where we go to learn more. Yeah. So with Hands on Nashville, you can go to hon.org. Um, you can learn about some programs that I didn't really have time to mention here today that we get engaged in um, and all about the organization. And not just us, you can also learn about our partner organizations and what they do and how to engage with them. Um, if you're interested in VOAD, um, we have a lot of materials already on the website that will help that help individuals to be prepared. Like what should you have in a disaster preparedness bag? So if something happens, you've got some materials ready. And that um, website is NashvilleResponse.com. 
Um, there's all kinds of uh, good material there, just like I said, for families and individuals to help be prepared also. Yeah, all of that information to me is so valuable in terms of being prepared because disaster, you never know when it's going to strike. And so one, having the, the city come together and mobilize strategically is really important, but you as an individual, as a family being prepared and having those resources is huge. So I agree. Well, Lori, thank you for all you and your amazing team do greatly appreciate it. Thank you for coming on the show. All right. Thank you so much.